Good morning, everyone. And uh, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about peritoneal fluid analysis. Now, same like pleural fluid, you know, peritoneal fluid is the fluid which is present inside the peritoneum, in the abdominal cavity, you can say. Like the same story, it is normally present in a very, very, very small quantities. But in certain conditions, it can collect in vast quantities and which can be detected by clinical examination, by imaging like ultrasonographies. Okay. So, whenever there is excess of peritoneal fluid is present, we call that condition as ascites. Now, if you haven't seen ascites, I can show you over here. Again, uh, ascites. Uh, see, this is all the photographs of ascites. So, of course, like this one is like collection of too much fluid in the inside the peritoneal cavity and you can see like the abdomen is too much distended and see the shape of the umbilicus it is everted it is outside so see this is like collection of extra fluid inside the peritoneal cavity so we call this condition as ascites so simply ascites you know the simplest definition of ascites is you can say the ab and abnormal um, collection uh, of peritoneal fluid in the peritoneal cavity or in the abdomen you can say okay so now uh, the test which we can do like same like we do plural tap in uh, case of plural fluid in this one we do peritoneal tap so peritoneal tap is also called as paracentesis. Okay, so it is called as what? Paracentesis. Uh, you can see, like I can show you how paracentesis looks like. Like again, in this one, what they have done is uh, they pass a small cannula inside the peritoneal cavity and they he had attached a syringe and what is happening, like he is collecting the fluid from the tummy. And again, uh, this paracentesis or peritoneal tap can be done for two main reasons. Same like it, it shares the same stories. Um, one is uh, to analyze the fluid. Okay. okay. I'm sure like it will fix on Z. Okay. And one is for therapeutic reasons. For like what therapeutic reasons like uh, when the person have too much collection of fluid inside that abdomen, uh, it can cause discomfort, it can cause a problem with breathing even because it is going to push uh, the, or what you can say, the diaphragm upwards. So, uh, it can be done for these reasons. But the important thing over here, which I wanted to discuss is whenever it is to analyze the fluid, so of course, in this case, uh, we want to see either um, the fluid is due to what kind of thing, like, or either sometimes we want to see either there's an infection in that peritoneal cavity or not. So, and of course, like to understand this thing in more details, you must know the, the causes of this thing. Uh, for example, now I will show you um, again, see this one is like a fluid sample used to create culture for analysis. So of course you can take the fluid and put it for culture or uh, we will show you some other diagrams or things. Um, okay, so the most common cause of ascites the most common cause of ascites is basically portal hypertension and what is portal hypertension as you know like there is portal circulation so there the pressure of that system is increased and the most common cause of portal hypertension is it is mostly secondary to liver cirrhosis so most of the patients you will found in clinical practice who have ascites basically they have liver cirrhosis 
and what are the causes of cirrhosis there are there are many but hepatitis b and c infections also play a role not play a role they cause cirrhosis however there are many other causes but like these are the few of the causes which i am talking about so of course like sometimes we have to distinguish that and that's why we do parasynthesis we to analyze the uh, peritoneal fluid okay so same like uh, pleural fluid it could be a uh, exudate or it could be a transudate okay so you can say like the stories are more or less the same so if you remember uh, in the pleural fluid analysis i was talking about when the protein contents are more than 30 it is mostly due to due to it is which is an exudate or whatever it is less than 30 it is a transudate so if you remember this thing so the same thing we can use over here but the cut off value is different for example for ascites for ascites you know the values are different in such a way that exudate have either uh, more than or equal to 25 in that one we take it as you know higher so in this one is 25 gram per liter of protein okay whereas in transudate it is when it is less than 25 gram per liter of protein okay so the cutoff is different otherwise the story is same and now again the same story guys if you remember we talk about the causes of transudate and the causes of exudate in that one it also have the same thing like transudates are mostly due to failures like cardiac failure like hypoalbuminemia like nephrotic syndrome and exudates are mostly due to infections um, inflammations or malignancies like uh, um, intraperitoneal infection or tuberculosis pancreatitis and things like this right but uh, it is very hard to uh, characterize the ascites or you can say it is very un unreliable so we can improve this accuracy by comparing the or you can say like accuracy uh, accuracy in characterizing ascites uh, can be improved by in that one we use cried lights criteria here we are going for some other thing but the idea is completely same in that one light criteria is simply you are comparing the protein or ldh content of the pleural fluid with the plasma so in this one the idea is same like we can improve by comparing um, the albumin content of of the acytic fluid with its level in in the serum so we call this thing as serum ascites um, albumin sorry serum ascites albumin gradient sag what is this this is ser simply um, serum um, ascites albumin gradient and to make it like more clear like we can if you will put a dash over here so the thing will become clear so it is like a comparison or the gradient between the serum and the acytic albumin levels we call it a sag so how they do it simply sag can be calculated as the value is like gram per liter so it is equal to 
if we take the serum albumin levels which are again in gram per liter subtract by ASIT's albumin levels which is also in gram per liter so of course like the value we get finally is gram per liter okay so we check this level of albumin in the serum and we check the level of albumin in ASIT's by doing parasynthesis and we subtract them and we get what serum albumin SIT is gradient okay now this is serum albumin SIT is gradient very 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 helpful and very 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 easy concept see if the SAAG is more than 1.1 gram per deciliter milligram per deciliter okay you can say or more than 11 gram per liter okay one can say that the patient is very likely to have portal hypertension because see the gradient is more okay the gradient is more here the gradient is less here the gradient is more what is meaning by more when we take the serum albumin levels and minus by acytic albumin levels, we found the value is more than 11 gram per liter, which means the serum album, albumin are maybe normal or near normal, but the acytic albumin are very less. But if the gradient is less than 11, which means that the serum albumin may be are normal or near normal, but acytic albumin is higher. Or there is more protein suppression, right? So when the SAAG is more than 1.1 milligram per deciliter, or you can say more than 11 gram per liter, one can say that the patient is more likely have portal hypertension, or what you can say are transudate. However, uh, you can see like all the causes of transudate: cirrhosis alcohol, appetitis, again cardiac problem, liver failure, okay, all these things. But whenever the SAAG is less than 1.1 milligram per deciliter or you can say less than 11 gram per liter, it is mostly, it is a exudate. So or you can say like inflammation, inflammation, obstruction, okay, biliary ascites, nephrotic syndrome and all such things like this. Okay, so this is one of the concept. Other thing which I wanted to talk about in this one is uh, um, the other things we check in the in these patients. You can see, for example, over here. Normally, the color of this fluid is pale yellow or clear, which is normal. So, other thing, if it is milk colored, so it means like it have chylus or chyme. So. It could be malignancy, lymphoma, TB, parasitic infection, or hepatic cirrhosis. Whenever it is cloudy or turbid, it can show point towards infection like peritonitis, primary bacterial infection, a perforated bowel, appendicitis, pancreatitis, things like this. And whenever it's a bloody tap, it could be benign or malignant tumors, it could be hemorrhagic, pancreatitis, perforated ulcers. Okay. So we check the color also. Other thing which you can see is we do check a lot of other things for example they check the triglyceride levels when the triglyceride levels are raised in the acytic fluid it could be due to these skin conditions they check the proteins when the proteins are more so think about infections spontaneous bacterial peritonitis when the and check the glucose so when the normally the glucose is this level so whenever it is less than six Think about TB and malignancy and they check the amylase levels as well because they can be raised in conditions like pancreatitis and they can also check the alkaline phosphatase. So they can be increased in small bowel perforation or strangulation. So <clears throat> one of the very important condition you know which can occur in a cytic patient is something called as spontaneous bacterial peritonitis so it is called as SBP so the detection of infection 
is very important in a cytic fluid. So what happens like simply the white blood cells count is raised. Makes sense, right? Which get raised in any kind of infection. So whenever there is any peritonitis, the white blood cell count is increased. So in most of the patient who have SITs which associated with cirrhosis, this is a very common problem. And we call it a spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. So what they do, like we have to identify either the patient have this thing or not. So the diagnosis of SBP can be made when we can detect detection of bacteria are identified. Okay. W white blood cell count will be raised and we detect the bacteria in that. But of course, like you know, the detection of the bacteria needs some time. You know, if you know what is culture, so it takes some days to detect this thing. So that's why before waiting for this result, okay. What we do, we check the white blood cell count and it guides us towards the treatment. For example, anyone who have SBP, um, any patient in which like the cytic fluid have neutrophils count of more than 250 cells per millimeter of Q, okay, this is one of the pointer. Okay, so whenever anyone's neutrophil cell count is more than 250 millimeter per Q, we start their treatment. Okay, so you can say neutrophil count of more than 250 millimeter per, 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 per Q, you know, is keeping uh, with SBP or spontaneous bacterial bacterial peritonitis. So one of the cause of peritonitis is also a perforated bowel, perforation, perforated ulcer, perforated bowel, any type of GIT perforation. So of course, like when the GIT are perforated, guys, you know, in this culture, there will be multiple organisms, especially gram negatives. So that's why this thing is important, okay? And that's why we go for this all investigations. So remember, we check the WBC count to detect the infection. We check the protein and the albumin content of the peritoneal fluid to differentiate between exudates and transudate. Uh, the other test which we can do for these patients is to do go for a uh, microscopy. Okay, sorry. I think like I must put the other things which we can do in this patient. So we can go for a microscopy. Microscopy. Okay. Uh, we can do cram staining. We can do culture and sensitivity. Of course, to check like what kind of organism is there and to which uh, drug it is susceptible to. So we can check the glucose levels. Okay, glucose will be low in tuberculosis. Glucose will be low in malignant conditions. We can go for cytology to see what kind of malignant cells are there. We can check the amylase levels, right? So same like that plural fusion. You know, we can do multiple tests in this one as well, and we can. <clears throat> we can detect like different kind of conditions in pleural fluid analysis. So, uh, sorry, peritoneal fluid analysis. The function of the peritoneal fluid is same like the pleural fluid. It is lubricating the abdominal cavity. And uh, remember in that one, lights criteria is important. And this one, this SAAG or serum um, SIT's albumin gradient is important, right? And uh, one of the thing, you know, uh, one of the thing which you will maybe study, something called as DPL. In the books, there will be something called as DPL. What is DPL? It is diagnostic peritoneal lavage. Okay, it is called as what? 
diagnostic peritoneal lavage simply this is to take the samples so simply whenever we are suspecting SVP we are going to perform DPL or you can say diagnostic peritoneal lavage okay and uh, uh, we are going to check like what kind of things are present so anyone uh, you know okay uh, that's also peritoneal lavage especially you know um, is done uh, for example to see uh, what things are present okay it's a fast process of course you can take so anyone who have like increased uh, RBCs increased WBCs or bacterias are present on uh, culture for example or on gram staining um, you know we call it as DPL is positive okay so when the DPL is positive okay of course like we know the causes of DPL positive like that that, that could be SPP spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and many other things so that's all for peritoneal fluid analysis guys and uh, in the next lecture we are going to start with uh, some other topic of diagnostics right uh, most probably we are going to start about okay because here we are discussing about microbiology and this all this stuff so of course like okay the next topic we are going to start is with microbiology thank you so much for listening